In this presentation, we will discuss property, plant, and equipment. Note that property, plant, and equipment may be called plant assets or depreciable assets. And property, plant, and equipment will include things that are tangible. Tangible meaning we can actually touch them. They're things that are physical, tangible. We can move them around typically. They're going to be used in the operations. So when we think about the tangible property, the same type of property could be either inventory or property, plant, and equipment depending on the use of that property. In other words, if we had something like a forklift and we used it for the business, that would be a form of property, plant, and equipment. However, if we're in the business of buying and selling forklifts, then it would be inventory. So we're talking about those types of tangible assets that are going to be used in the, in the business for business operations and they have a future benefit. So note that all assets basically have a future benefit. That's why we hold them. That's why they're assets. That's why they're not expenses. We have not yet consumed them in order to help generate revenue in this time period. We're holding them with the hope that they will help us generate revenue in the future. When considering property, plants, and equipment, we often have that uh, question as to should we put something on the books when we purchase it as an asset or should we put it on the books as an expense? Most of us intuitively know that certain things should be assets such as buildings, such as equipment, and we'll take a look at those examples. However, we don't often know exactly why we intuitively know this. And the rule is because of this future benefit. If we're purchasing something and it has future benefit, then oftentimes it should be put on the books as an asset. If we buy a car, we're not consuming the car today for today's use. We might be using it a bit today, but it's going to be used a long time in the future and therefore should be capitalized on the books and then expensed over a time period. So these are going to be the components of the assets that we're talking about in terms of property, plant, and equipment. The life cycle of property, plant, and equipment typically will start with the acquisition, with the purchase. So if, for example, if we're purchasing a building, we're going to have the acquisition first. Then we're going to allocate cost to the periods benefited. And that's going to be the key point here. That's why we capitalize it because we cannot allocate the cost uh, at the point in time that it is purchased, even if we pay cash for it, because we're going to be consuming this uh, property, plant, and equipment through future time periods and therefore under the matching principle must allocate the cost to those future time periods when it's consumed in order to help generate revenue. So of course our problem is going to be how to do that. We have different ways that we'll talk about how to best make that allocation and we'll need estimates in order to do that. At the end of the uh, assets or the property, plant, and equipment's life, we will typically dispose of it at some time. Most property, plants, and equipment will not last forever and will have some point in time where we will need to dispose of it. And that's going to be the major three kind of journal entries that we'll need to be making. When we buy property, plant, and equipment, which is pretty straightforward, we're just basically going to debit property, plant, and equipment and asset and credit whatever we pay for it, cash or a loan. The tricky part will, of course, be the allocation. And we'll talk about different allocation methods and how to calculate allocation methods. And then we'll have the disposal, which can be a little bit tricky as well because we will be introducing a new account, and that's going to be a, a, a contra asset account, accumulated depreciation. We've probably seen it before, but we haven't really calculated it and work with how that number comes about. The acquisition cost is going to be part of the property, plants, and equipment, and that's pretty clear. When we purchase property, plants, and equipment, we know that the purchase price of it will be part of the cost. But it's also important to note that expenditures to prepare for use will all also be uh, needed. So if we're putting something in place, if we have to, um, if we bought a refrigerator and we had to put the refrigerator in uh, place and, and pay for that installation, then that installation, although it wasn't the sticker price, is part of what we need to get it up and running and in operations and therefore would be part of that property, plant, and equipment that we would capitalize, not expense, and then allocate over the useful life. So if we talk, there's a few different categories now of property, plant, and equipment. One is going to be machinery. So we're talking machinery and equipment. And that, of course, when we buy something like a forklift, it's going to acquire, we're going to have the acquisition cost. 
We're going to have those expenditures used, um, expenditures to prepare for use of that forklift. So whatever we need to do to get the forklift up and running, in addition to the acquisition costs, we're going to include. Obviously, the price is going to be included in terms of, of what is capitalized. What we're adding up here is what is going to be capitalized as this forklift. And you would think it would just be the sticker price, but all these things would be included. The acquisition cost, the expenditures, the, the price would be related to it, the taxes, if we had to have sales tax on the forklift, that would be included. Any installation, uh, obviously a forklift, would, you know, if we had to transport it here, probably <laughs> installation wouldn't be here, but transport would possibly be here if we had to buy the forklift and then ship it then we wouldn't be able to just expense the shipping costs. And note, that's really the, the difference here that we want to keep in mind. The question would be, well, what about the sales tax? Can we expense that or should we capitalize it? No, we need to capitalize it because we're purchasing the forklift. What about the installation? If we had to install anything uh, to get the forklift up and running, can we expense that or should we capitalize it? Well, if it's for the initial purchase and we need to make the installation, we should typically capitalize it as part of keeping the forklift up and running getting it ready for use transportation should we expense that if we had to pay for the transportation in addition to the sticker price of the forklift or capitalize it along with the forklift we should capitalize it typically because we needed the transportation in order to get the forklift up and running uh, and for use in the operations um, transport insurance is another example if we had to pay for insurance during the transport process that should be capitalized rather than expensed as well. Another category of property plans and equipment is building. So if we purchase a building, we have similar type of things. The question is, well, what are we going to include in the cost of the building? Uh, similar reasoning would be in place, but we have a, a few different factors when considering the building. Obviously, the purchase cost or construction would be in the building. So if we just bought the building, then whatever the price would clearly be in it. If we construct the building, then it can be uh, a little bit confusing to think about because we, the construction process could be a long process and we're basically capitalizing everything through that entire process of constructing the building as part of the cost of the building, meaning we're not typically expenses, expensing anything during that construction process. We're going to put it on the books as a capital asset. The title costs, taxes, uh, broker fees for uh, the purchase of the building, attorney fees for the purchase of the building. These are all going to be things that will be capitalized along with the building because they're needed to be done in order to get the building up and running. And again, the question would be, well, can we expense these things or do we should we capitalize them? And it really depends on your angle as to whether what you would want to do as a business, like what does the what does the business owner would they like to do? Uh, notice that capitalizing typically makes the business look better because we're putting the, the asset on the books and we're not expensing it over time uh, as quickly. We're not just writing it off at this time period and therefore net income will typically be higher as well as assets. However, for taxes, we would typically want net income to be lower in order to uh, write off more deductions and have lower net income and lower taxes. So depending on what your what your objective is, the business may be asking either way and hoping either way that some of these things can be either expensed or capitalized as part of the building. Uh, so, for example, they might be hoping they can expense some of the of the taxes related to the building, um, so that the low, to lower their taxes, their income taxes, and the brokerage fee. The question could be, well, can I write off the brokerage fee this year rather than capitalizing it and then expensing it? And those types of things can add up, and we got to follow the rules here in terms of what should be allocated. These are going to be part of the purchase and part of getting the building up and running, and therefore should be part of the capitalization of the building, not expense when paid. Then we're going to have land improvements. Now we've got land and then land improvements. Land is, is, is what it is. It's just going to be the land that the building is going to be on and it's not something that's going to depreciate. Now, things we put on the land that are going to be permanent structures, like driveways, fences, shrubs, uh, lighting, parking lots, those are all going to be things that um, we're going to say are land improvements, typically. And uh, so those are going to be the type of assets we have for land improvements. We're going to depreciate over the useful life of the improvements. 
And that's going to be important because land doesn't typically go away, but the improvements will. So whatever we do to the land, we're going to, we're going to, if it's a typically something that's going to like be permanently attached to the land or installed in the land in some way, that basically if you sold the land, you would still have uh, the structures on it most likely, then those are going to be improvements and those will deteriorate over time and therefore need to be depreciated, have need to have the cost allocated. However, the land itself, once purchased, you don't really depreciate that. The cost is what it is and it's going to be there for good. The land's not going to go away in a human lifetime, hopefully. So then if we have land, it's another category of property, plants, and equipment. What is included in the purchase of land? Obviously, the purchase of price of land. Same principles that are in play here. The title insurance. So that would be part of the cost of the land, the title insurance. Uh, the surveying fees. If there's any surveying fees, that would be in cost of the land and be capitalized. We've got the real estate commissions. That would be a cost of the land. And we've got uh, the title search and transfer. Also going to be a cost of the land and improvements.